What was it that was so important that you felt the need to shout outside my door? What did you think you were doing? Well, I was taking a nap in the gardens before, so you so rudely started shunning. That's no why I'm man, and you know it. The announcement. Oh, <laughs> Dad. Yes, Dad. Did you really think I would date that lion, dude? As hard as this may be for you to believe, this has nothing to do with you. The hell it doesn't! I have yet to win any of this silly game. If they are so silly, then you should be glad that you won't have to suffer for another year of them. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have other things to do. He threw on his heel and walked away, but Mr. Bandages wouldn't have it. He strode after Eric. Don't you dare walk away from me while I'm talking to you! Mr. Wool and I exchanged a word look before hurrying to catch up with the two taller men. I don't see what we still have to discuss. I made my decision and if you're so determined to win at least once, then you should focus on that. Not me. This is your last chance after all. Eric took a tour in the one of the halls and the heads of the occupants all swerved towards us. Don't think I'm dropping this just because you decided to make it public. You made it public with all your shouting. I'm simply attending to my duties as host. He began his descent down the stairs to the hall as though this was nothing now of the ordinary. Mr. Bandages stepped at the top of the stairs, so Mr. Wolf and I did as well. Drop this idiotic act and just listen to me for once! Eric froze, not even halfway down the stairs. After a moment, he scared his shoulders and turned around to face Mr. Bandages. The entire house seemed to be holding their breath in anticipation of Eric's response. When he did speak, his voice was low and controlled. You. People leaned in close as they strained to hear what he was saying. A sudden chance it caused me to lose my balance. As it started falling, time seemed to slow down to the point where I could see Eric's eyes widen. The next thing I knew, he was catching me in his arms. Before I could even feel an ounce of relief, I felt Derek shift. He was taking a step back to compensate for the momentum, but there was no floor behind him. His action had us both falling downwards. I closed my eyes and braced myself, only to have them fly open when I felt my face collide with a hard object. Eric's face? Ooh, how does it look kinda suspicious? For a moment I was too shocked to even realize you had stopped falling. The music is so weird. I can't even forget the music in this game. Sometimes it just surprises me. It's just like, like oh. Eric didn't seem to have the same problem, though, as he turned his head to face our savior. His battle. Impeccable timing, as always. Do be careful, Master Valdemar. Ever go down on me, questioning you. Are you okay, Miss Archer? Apart from a pain in the chow, yeah. I'm terribly sorry about that. The sound of people murmuring brought our attention to the fact his arms were still loosely wrapped around me. Eric abruptly let go of me and turned to face his butler fully. Please, see to it that these stairs are red on or hire an exorcist. That's the fifth time I've almost tumbled down them in this month. There's no way that's normal. Of course, Master Valdemar. A worried Mr. Wolf made his way to us. Are you okay, Miss Sartre? 
Yeah, my jaw is just a bit sore. That's all. You should probably get that checked out. Mr. Bandages, you know where the onside doctor is, right? I mean, you were just there or suddenly thanks to your swim in the lake. Could you take her there? Do it yourself. You're the host. I would, but I have other matters to see to. Still, if you're a dumb one about not doing, I can just get one of my staff to do so. I just throw in my wand to see as this only happened because you were throwing a tantrum. I'll go. I need to pick up some more pain relievers anyway. Then it's settled now. If you excuse me, I'll take my leave.